Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you here this morning. There's fewer of you, fewer of you than there was last night. Uh, we have 54 here for the concert, and I almost felt like I needed to do church service. <laughs> I resisted, though. But we had a wonderful uh, Nebraska Brass concert, so uh, we are grateful that uh, they're willing to come and that uh, folks were uh, in attendance. Uh, I want to say thanks for those who have helped out with decorating uh, both here and for those that decorated over at Grace. We are grateful for that. Appreciate that very much. This evening, why there's an opportunity if you've been um, concerned about some of the things that you hear on the news in terms of what's happening to families and children uh, in Gaza, why uh, there is a, an event that is raising funds for the Palestine. Palestinian Children's Relief Fund. So it's a fund that uh, provides for health care and so forth for children within God. Uh, that's the secret. So let's then begin with a word of prayer. Lord God, as we gather on this day, why you remind us through the words of, of the prophet and through Jesus that, and, and through uh, the recognition on John the Baptist part of the fact that Jesus was the one that was chosen by God. We pray, Lord, that as you instruct us, but also as your spirit works within us, may bring to us the comfort of your peace in this time. May we know and receive your blessing, and may we in turn be a blessing to others. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Diane will prepare us with Thank mm -hmm. you.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. Amen. Amen. God is patient and merciful, desiring all to come to repentance. Trusting this promise of grace, let us confess our sin. Please use this time of silence for your own personal prayer. Everlasting God, you love justice and you hate wrongdoing. We confess the fear, greed, and self-centeredness that make us reluctant to work against oppression. We are complicit in systems of exploitation. We choose comfort over courage. We are careless with creation's bounty. Look upon us with mercy. Turn our hearts again to you. Make us glad to do your will and to walk in your ways for the sake of our waiting world. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God clothes you with the garments of salvation and covers you with the robes of righteousness. In the tender compassion of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God's covenant is eternal, and God's blessing rests upon us all. Amen. Amen. We join in singing, prepare the royal high. Let us 
Peter 
Peter chapter 3, beginning with the 8th verse. A reading from 2 Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, <coughs> excuse me, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your thoughts. 
thoughts might have been, as you recall, the rocks that you stumble over, the parchment's nest that dries out your throat as you attempt to walk from place to place. Would this word from Isaiah just be happy talk? Pie in the sky? Imagination. Can you imagine what the glory of the Lord would look like in this place and time? A voice, it says, cry out. And the prophet says, what shall I cry? Indeed, what shall I cry? Nobody wants to believe that this can happen. Seriously, who believes that uneven ground is going to become level and rough places become a plain? The reality is, the prophet says all people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. One day beautiful, the next day not so. Grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. Indeed. But, the prophet says, the word of our God will stand forever. Like that, that would be something we could sing about. So what is this all about? 
What are the people waiting for when Isaiah comes to them with this word? It's a classic piece of what we loosely call post-exilic literature. It might have been an earlier prophecy, but it certainly applies to the time of exile immediately after the Babylonian exile. Because the time of the exile, by the glory of the Lord, which had inhabited the great temple in Jerusalem, had disappeared. It went away. Ezekiel would describe that, and it's a rather scary moment. Has God gone forever? I can't help but wonder the Palestinian people of Gaza this day, the Christian people in the West Bank, they're not asking the same question. Has God gone away? In the terror of what they are living and crying out, is God gone forever? These prophecies, particularly Isaiah and Ezekiel and Zechariah and Malachi, assure the people that God will come back. And that's what we observe too. The glorious presence of Yahweh is going to return. This is the hope. At the same time, it is a puzzle. Because when the people come back and they rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, there's a sense that, yes, this is the place where Yahweh has been. But what do we do now? Because it feels as if there is a divine absence. So it's a puzzle. Why hasn't God actually returned in power? Because if God had, then the Babylonians wouldn't be ruling over us. Or, after the Babylonians, the Persians. Well, or then, uh, then the Greeks. Uh, and then the Syrians. And, and finally, the Romans in the time of Jesus. If God had really come back in glory, none of that would have And so the prophet promises that there will be, as it were, a new pilot. God to travel. Rough places become smooth. Anything in the way, any valley, is going to be filled up. The mountains and hills are going to be flattened down so that there's a very smooth way for God to return. This looks ahead to the 52nd chapter, which talks about the same thing happening in the watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem shouting for joy because they see Yahweh, Israel's God, returning to Zion. So when we shift over to the New Testament and we find John the Baptist describing himself as this voice crying in the wilderness, then we should expect, if we know Isaiah, that what happens next is the arrival of God himself. Now, we're not quite sure what John the Baptist thought that would look like. But John points to the one who is coming after him, Jesus, and says in the next passage after this, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Because dealing with people's sins was part of the prerequisite for the glory of God to return. The glory wouldn't come back and dwell with the people who was still deep in sin. And if the sin had not been resolved. So that forgiveness of sins, return from exile, the return of Yahweh to Zion, these are part of this advent promise that God makes. But in the gospel stories from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in their various ways, we are told that all that complex of Jewish expectation and, oh my goodness, look, it is now fulfilled in Jesus. So this should give us confidence as you and I journey through this season of Advent. Often during this dark time of the year, 
when people become despondent and anxious, worried about many things, oh, yeah, well, we often are. Often are. And feel the force of what this prophet says. People are like grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. As we get older, why we feel like we're falling apart, things are not as easy as they once were. The world is still in a mess. Oh my goodness, is that an understatement? But says the prophet, the word of our God stands forever. It is the word of God which is the creative power which takes us through this season all the way to Christmas. And then from this Advent season to second Advent, believing however these things are at the moment, there will come a time when God will put all things right, when God will return in power and glory, and the world will be as God always So let us pray. Almighty God, give us faith. Instill in us hope as we read these stories of Jesus to learn to see who you really are in the person of your Son. And to learn to follow him, trust him today and in the dark times of our lives. And as we look ahead to the time you will be all in all. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I would invite you to turn to the back of the celebrated insert where you'll find the prayer petitions of the church. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers to the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Send forth your faithful people with words of promise and forgiveness. Teach your church to be bold in revealing your good news in word and in deed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Reveal your majesty in mountain peaks flowing rivers, and blossoming wilderness roads. Heal the earth where it longs for renewal. Bring wholeness to the earth and all of its creatures. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Turn the hearts of the nations towards righteousness and peace. Increase cooperation for justice between countries, commonwealths, political parties, and diplomatic leaders. In times of prosperity, direct leaders to be generous for the sake of all. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Comfort your people with tender words of love and healing. Surround all who are grieving, all who know depression or anxiety, and all who feel lonely or forgotten. Be a steadfast presence when all else feels uncertain. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant holy patience to all who are waiting this season. Give hope to those who are seeking employment. Bring reassurance to people awaiting new diagnoses or treatment. Protect expectant parents. Watch with those who keep bedside vigils. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With you, a thousand years is like a day. Bless the memory of the saints from ages past and the anticipations of the saints yet to be born. Inspire us to live with faith as we await your new heaven and new earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. Let us extend that peace to one another.
Receive and bless these gifts of your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Yes, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks for the church. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, from whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels of the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Let us stand as we are able. Let us pray. Gracious God, in bread and cup, you have revealed your glory for all people to see together. Nourished by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release, brought to birth in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The God of peace bless you. The love of Christ sustain you in hope. And the anointing of the Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Our closing song is on Jordan's Bank.